St. Mark AME Church is not here to simply occupy a building, but to serve. You are important to us. When you fall into tough times, we're here. Every second and fourth Sunday from 1 until 2.30, you'll find a pop-up pantry on our grounds when the weather permits and inside the church facility when it does not. Besides healthy, nutritious food, you'll also find prayer, encouragement, and listening ears. St. Mark is a welcoming community, fostering a sense of belonging. Community is important. And here, we want to make sure no one in this community has to go without essential needs. That's the reason for the pop-up pantry. No application or sign-up required. Remember, we're here every second and fourth Sunday from 1 until 2.30 at 1616 West Atkinson Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53206. Praise report! The roof replacement project is complete. Now that the physical work is done, the monetary portion still lingers. We need your help in raising the remaining $100,000 of the $313,000 project. That amounts to just 200 people giving $500. Your gift will lessen our need to divert much needed resources from our community outreach. You can make your donation by visiting stmartame.org slash giving, by using Givelify, or by mailing to or dropping it by St. Mark AME Church at 1616 West Atkinson Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53206. And thank you. Let's learn and grow. Starting October 1st, join St. Mark in a 30-day journey through the Book of Acts. Together, we'll explore how to change our world by engaging God's Word and acting it out. Simply download the Bible app and search for Now is the Time, Acts Adult Journey. Through it, we can interact daily. And don't forget to email us at info at stmarkame.org for 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Wednesday Bible study Zoom invites, reading schedules, activities, and a hard copy of the app material if needed. Let's make this journey together. Simply download the Bible app and search for Now is the Time, Acts Adult Journey. And don't forget to email us at info at stmarkame.org for 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Wednesday Bible study Zoom invites. You are important to us, so let's stay connected. Find out about and even watch special events, services, and community outreach by liking us on Facebook and subscribing to our YouTube channel, St. Mark AME Church Milwaukee, or head to our website, stmarkame.org. You don't want to miss a thing. We strive to encourage, nourish, and enlighten, and even have some fun. So thank you for making St. Mark a part of your lives. Stay connected. Welcome to the services of St. Mark AME Church. Reverend Dr. Joy L. Gallman is our pastor. We invite you to join us as we worship and hear the divinely inspired Word of God. Welcome to St. Mark African Methodist Episcopal Church and our Sunday morning worship experience. Today we will have our pop-up pantry at Quality of Life number two at 1530 West Atkinson Avenue. And we encourage you to come by and to pick up some food, maybe for yourself or maybe for someone on your block. Today we will start at one o'clock and we'll wrap up around three o'clock. Again, that's the pop-up pantry here at St. Mark and Quality of Life number two, located at 1530 West Atkinson. Avenue. I know this is the second Sunday, but we will celebrate today um, all of those who were born in the month of October. We want to bless God for each and every one of you. We want to invite you to post your birthday or your family or your friend's birthday in the chat so that we can celebrate with you. I do want to take a moment of personal privilege to celebrate my mother who will celebrate her 80th birthday on October the 23rd and we give God glory for who she is and what she means in my life and the life of our family. We also want to take a moment to shout out those persons who have a wedding anniversary in the month of October. We encourage you too as well to post your date or the date of your family members or your parents in the chat so that we can celebrate them as well. I also want to thank all of you um, who helped me celebrate my 54th birthday in September. Every card, every text, every post um, warmed my heart and encouraged my spirit. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the birthday shout outs. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's time for worship. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship. You are good and you're 
called to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the presence of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For there thy presence is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the presence of my God than to dwell in the presence of wickedness. Because of the presence of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that are planted in the presence of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, O Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the, For the Lord, Lord is in his holy temple. Let all of your keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Together, O, o sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing praise. Most gracious and eternal Father, we humbly come into your presence in this house of worship this morning. First of all, acknowledging that you are God and that you are God all by yourself. And then acknowledging, Lord, that without you we are nothing. 
but with you we are capable of doing all things. So we lift your name up this morning in worship and prayer. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would just be with us, that you would release your Holy Spirit upon this sanctuary this morning, and that you will allow it to nourish and to fester in each one of our souls so that we will be rekindled with that sacred flame of love. But before we can do anything, Father, we have to ask you for forgiveness, for we have committed many sins since last we gathered in this place. So, Father, we ask that you would have mercy upon us, that you would cast all of our sins of omission as well as commission into the sea of forgetfulness. Father, sprinkle us with the blood of Jesus Christ this morning so that we will be made clean and whole, that we will be able to use that title, children of the living God. We need you this morning, Lord, like never before. Fill this sanctuary with your glory so that everything that is said and done here will be pleasing to you and will bring you honor and glory. Father, we pause to thank you for life. We thank you for keeping us from the last time we met to this very moment, that you didn't allow anything to come between us and you that you were not able to bring us through. So we say thank you and praise your holy name. Father, we thank you for opportunities that you have given us this week. We thank you for the, just the rising of the sun this morning. We thank you for the holiness of this day. But most of all, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ who though he did not commit or think it to be robbery, went to that old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He bled, suffered, and died, though he had done nothing wrong. But he did it all so he could claim the victory for our sins and wickedness, so that we would not have to suffer eternal death, but would have everlasting life in eternity with you. Father, if you do nothing else for us, you've done abundantly more than we deserve. Now, Lord, as we go into worship this day, we ask that you would anoint everything that is going to be used this morning. Touch the instruments, Lord, but not just the instrument. Touch those whose hands that play them. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would just touch each and every person who is operating a device that allows this to be broadcast for us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all of those things that you have kept us from suffering through on this morning, and you brought us to worship. So we worship and praise you in a mighty way today, Lord. We thank you in advance for the things that you are going to do in this service. Lord, we thank you for the people that are going to listen to the word of God and be led to go on just a little further. Somebody's listening to my voice this morning who had to go by the doctor's office this week and they may not have gotten a favorable report, but we know that you are in that situation so we claim victory in the doctor's office. Somebody had to go by the jailhouse this week because somebody that they love was in danger. But we know that you are a God of justice and of peace. And just like you released the shackles off of Paul, we know that you can relieve the things that they're going through in the criminal justice system. So we turn them over to you this morning, Lord. And then, Lord, we lift up those who wander the darkness of this world in trouble and spirit and don't know you, don't know where to turn, Father. We just pray this morning that somebody, somewhere, will say a word in their presence. Maybe the speaker of the hour will be able to touch them through you today, Lord, that they might come asking, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Lord, give your children the courage to stand boldly and proclaim that Jesus Christ is the way, 
that Jesus Christ is the only way. Now, Lord, when we come to that hour, that hour where the speaker will stand at your holy table and will utter the words that will not come from her, Lord, but will come from you. Let her go deep down inside the recesses of your spirit, Lord, and feed her with your holy word so that when she speaks, we will not hear her voice, but we will hear your precious sweet voice and our souls will be fed one more time. Encourage her, Lord, as she speaks. Encourage her, Lord, as she do the work that you have assigned her. Encourage her, Lord, to just keep on keeping on. You are an awesome God and you are able to do things that no one else can do. And we need you at this corner of the vineyard that we call St. Mark. So come Holy Spirit, Sweet heavenly dove with all of your quickening powers and kindle a flame of love in these old cold hearts of ours that we may be able to worship you in truth and in spirit today. Father, we will be ever so careful when it's done to give you all the honor and the glory for it's in your precious son Jesus Christ's name that we say and ask it all. And everyone said amen. Amen. Good morning, St. Mark. Here are your announcements for this Sunday morning. St. Mark will have its official board meeting on Wednesday, October the 19th at 6 p.m. All officers and ministry heads are expected to attend, so we hope to see you there. Secondly, St. Mark will host its monthly pop-up food pantry on Sunday, October the 10th and Sunday, October 24th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Any volunteers that are willing to attend are encouraged to come. St. Mark will resume its 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Wednesday Bible study sessions. However, we are also thrilled to announce that there will be additional services that will come in two plans. Our first plan will be catered to young adults ages 18 to 25, which will start on Sunday, October the 16th. Our second plan will be called Kids Corner, where parents and children will do fun virtual activities together and learn about prayer, faith, miracles, and much more. This plan starts on Sunday, October the 24th. Through these sessions, we will use the scripture to help and navigate the challenges of life, such as mental health, spirituality, and topics that you want, and we will do it together. For more information, you may send an email to info at stmark.com. And finally, in this month of October, we celebrate and wish blessings upon everyone who has a birthday or wedding anniversary for the month. May God continue to shine his light upon your lives and unions and make them even stronger in your walk with him. Congratulations to you all. Well, that about wraps up our Sunday morning announcements for this morning. Thank you for listening, and may God continue to bless you all. Good morning, St. Mark. My name is Abby Ajabola, and I am coming to you this morning 
from our new health ministry. As you know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I will be presenting a new series called, Did You Know? Wherein I will be bringing you some facts to raise your awareness about breast cancer. Fact number one. Did you know about one in eight women in the U.S. will develop invasive breast cancer during their lifetime? Two, did you know black women experience higher rates of death from breast cancer due to a combination of factors, including barriers to early diagnosis? the aggressive nature of certain breast cancers that are more prevalent in black women. Genetics, lack of high quality care, most of all, a combination of discrimination and systemic racism. Your race and where you live should not determine if you live. Did you know black women are about 40% more likely to die of breast cancer than white women. Black women have a lower five-year breast cancer survival rate compared to white women. Black women are more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer at a younger age. Black women are more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer at a later stage with a more aggressive type of breast cancer than white women. These facts were taken from Stand For Her, Health Quality Revolution by Susan G. Coleman. If you didn't know, now you know. Stay tuned next week for Did You Know? Thank you for listening and I love you. Good morning. My name is Helen Harris, and I am inviting everyone to attend the Common Ground Assembly, which will take place on Sunday, October 17th, from 3 to 4.30 p.m. on Zoom. Common Ground is a community organization that works for solutions to problems and concerns that impact our community. And we have an excellent reputation and track record for getting things done that really do make a difference. This is your opportunity to hear what others have said and to make your views known about what you think needs to be done. For information, please send an email to stmarkame.org for more information and to sign up. Again, the Common Ground Assembly, Sunday, October 17th, 3 to 4.30 p.m. on Zoom. We hope to see you there. The offertory appeal to today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 13 from the New Revised Standard Version. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. The one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up in your minds, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful, cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry is not, for the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgiving to God. 
And so with this word of scripture, I encourage you to sow your seed of offering, your seeds of tithes and offering, your seeds of time and talents, and your seeds of your resources as a spiritual discipline. I share with you that St. Mark African Methodist Episcopal Church here in Milwaukee is good ground. And we pray that you will choose to sow a seed in this ministry so that we can continue to do the work that God has called us to do, to meet the needs of those who are poor in spirit and those who are in need for, of a word from God. And so we pray this blessing. We pray that God will glorify you, that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings, that God will be glorified by your obedience um, by your spirit of generosity, by your willingness to share with others so that there might be meat in God's house, so that the work and the ministry of Christ might go forward. Do it, God. We pray that you would bless those um, families and homes that have given, oh God, that you pour them out blessings, that you bless them for their generosity, that you pour them out a great harvest, not just a financial harvest, but a harvest of peace and joy, a harvest of reconciliation, a harvest of health, a harvest of joy in the midst of the storm. Do it, O oh God, and we'll be mindful to give your name honor and glory. And the people of God said, Amen. I surrender all to you. to you withholding nothing withholding nothing
give to you everything I give to you withholding nothing withholding you to preach this your preacher oh God not for my vain glory but preach this your preacher because your people need to hear a word from you God I give myself to you in this preaching moment to be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom from the for the expansion of your realm for the progression of salvation for the work of the scattered. Preach God. Preach God. Preach God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Here at St. Mark in Milwaukee, we are reading the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. We are on day 10 of a church-wide read of the fifth book of the New Testament, the Acts of the Apostles. We're reading a chapter each day, and we're studying Acts in all of our Bible studies, and I'll be preaching from the book of Acts, the Acts of Apostles. If you would like to join us, um, please call the office. If you would like a calendar of the reading schedule, or if you would like to join us on one of our social media platforms um, to join us in Bible study, we encourage you to email or call the office um, so that you can request additional information. The Acts of the Apostles. The Act of the Apostles offers, the book offers us insight on the development of the church. The Acts of the Apostles is about the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The book, the Acts of the Apostles, is about the fulfillment of the mission of the church given in the opening of Acts, in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 8, reads this way. The first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he, Jesus, ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, this is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so when they had come together, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time that you will restore the kingdom of God to Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses 
in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and all the ends of the earth. The Acts of the Apostles is a continuation of the gospel according to Luke. It is a continuation of the presence of Jesus in the world through the lives of his followers who proclaim his word and act in his name. The book of Acts of the Apostles not only details the birth of the church on the day of Pentecost when they were all together in one place and suddenly there was a sound like a rushing wind and fire fell from heaven and they began to speak in unlanguages that they did not know. And Peter preached. And the Lord added thousands to the church that day. The book of the apostles is a book that makes clear the Christian movement, the way of Christ, and that it began in Jerusalem among Jewish followers of Jesus. But after an amazing period of growth amongst the Jews, the Christian message was taken to the Gentiles, among whom enjoyed greater success. I would like to submit for our consideration this Lord's Day that the Acts of the Apostles is really a book about salvation's progression. That the Acts of the Apostle is really about the mission of the church beyond Jerusalem. That the Acts of the Apostle, the book is really about the inclusion of the outcast and the unclean. The Acts of the Apostle is really about the work of the scattered. Um, LaSandra, who does an excellent job of programming and organizing and producing our worship service, challenges me every week to name and title the sermons. And so this week she gets to choose between salvation's progression and the work of the scattered. In this preaching moment, I want us to look at Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 8, which begins like this in the New Revised Standard Version. And Saul approved their killing of him. That day, a severe persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria. Devout men buried Stephen and made loud lamentations over him. But Saul was ravaging the church by entering house after house, dragging out both men and women. He committed them to prison. Verse 4, now those who were scattered went from place to place, proclaiming the word. Now those who were scattered went from place to place, proclaiming the word. Philip went to a city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowd, with one accord, listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, hearing and seeing the signs that he did for unclean spirits, crying out with loud shrieks, came out of many who were possessed, and many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in that city. Hmm. After the public execution of Stephen, who was a Greek-speaking Jewish follower of Christ. According to the Acts chapter 6, Stephen was full of grace and power and did great wonders and signs among the people. After the public execution of Stephen, under the watchful eye of Saul with his approval, that very same day, a great and severe, a powerful, persecution broke out and arose against the church in Jerusalem. Hmm. And you'll be my witnesses in Samaria and Jerusalem and Judea and to the ends of the earth. That very day, Acts chapter 8 verse 1 tells us that all except the apostles were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria. Uh, it's interesting to me that only the apostles are left in Jerusalem. Everybody else is scattered. Only the apostles stay in Jerusalem. Everybody else is scattered. They are no longer in one place on one accord. They are no longer praying together in the safety of Jerusalem. Only the 12 
who walked with Jesus, minus Judas, who was replaced by Matthias, who was replaced Judas, stayed in Jerusalem. Everybody else was scattered. Everybody else was distracted. Everybody else was displaced. Everybody else was disorganized. Everybody else was thrown out randomly. Everybody else except the 12 were thrown out and scattered. The power of this text to me is the response of the scattered in response to the severe persecution, in response, in the midst of being flung out of Jerusalem, the place where they felt presence of God the most. The Bible says that it is the scattered and not the apostles who spread the word wherever they went. Acts chapter 8 verse 4 says, now those who were scattered went from place to place, not whining and complaining. They went from place to place, not lamenting what they lost, but they went from place to place proclaiming the word of God. It is the scattered. It is, the, it is those persons who can't go home, who bear witness to the power of the life and the death and the resurrection and the ascension of their Messiah, Jesus the cross. When they're in Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. This passage of scripture, Acts chapter 8, in verse 5, brings up a great missionary, Philip. It says in verse 5, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. Philip in Acts chapter 8 should not be confused with the apostle Philip. He's still in Jerusalem. This Philip in Acts chapter 8 is not one of the original 12 disciples. Rather, this Philip is one of the seven. You remember the seven in Acts chapter 6? He's one of the seven Hellenistic Jews who were chosen, who were full of the Holy Spirit, who walked in wisdom and had a good reputation. He was one of the seven who was chosen to serve the Greek-speaking widows. Uh, Philip's name appears second in the list of the seven who were chosen to serve. First Stephen and then Philip. It is Philip who now, after the death of Stephen, becomes a leader of the Hellenistic Jews, of the widows, who it is, now, it is now Philip who now is responsible to take care of the Hellenistic um, widows who had been overlooked in the past. It is Philip, the scattered, who continues the work began by Jesus and the Samaritan woman. You remember the Samaritan woman who was at the well? who had an encounter with Jesus, who talked about the right and the wrong place to worship. And then he, they had an in-depth conversation, a moment of counseling, and then she ran and became an evangelist and told everybody in her city who were also Samaritans, come see a man. It's Philip who takes up the mantle given to him uh, in Samaria that continues the work that Jesus and the Samaritan woman started. But let us, I want us to understand this work that Philip does. It's not easy work. It's not praying. It didn't get him a seat at the table, at the table of the elders. It was not glorious work. It was not celebrated work. What Philip was doing was unheard of at the time. You got to remember that traditional Jews considered Samaritans racially impure. Traditional Jews, the Jews who hung out in the safety of the walls of Jerusalem considered Samaritans religiously non-conforming, unorthodox, uh, blasphemous. Traditional Jews considered Samaritans politically treacherous. Uh, it was in Samaria that the gatekeepers of the Roman occupation had their headquarters. And so if the headquarters of the Roman occupation was in Samaria, that means they worked in Roman homes. That means they made their money at the hands of Roman. And so they were considered traitors to their own people. 
uh, traditional Jews considered Samaritans uh, unclean and, and they treated them as outcasts, outcasts within the family of Israel because their temple was not in Jerusalem, their holy place. The place where they met God and were in God's presence was on a different mountain. Samaritans, but the thing about Samaritans and Jews, they both followed a version of the Torah. They were both waiting, uh, waiting for a Messiah. They were both waiting for the Christ. They were both waiting for the one to restore their fortunes and redeem them, the one that is described in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people and you shall heed such a prophet. It is Philip the scattered that goes to this place that none of his friends would appreciate. It is Philip the scattered who bears witness to the work of God in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, the Messiah. It is Philip who goes to the Samaritans and tell them that their Messiah has come and he's come for them as well as the Jews in Jerusalem. The Bible says that the crowds with one accord listened eagerly to what Philip the scattered had to say, hearing and seeing the signs that he did for unclean spirits, crying out without shrieks, came out of the many who were possessed and many others who were paralyzed or lamed and cured. It is in the witnessing of Philip that a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit, that economic and social barriers and long-standing religious prejudices and barriers begin to crumble. It is Philip the scattered who has come to Samaria to announce the arrival of God's salvation, not just for the Jews in Jerusalem behind the safety of the walls, but for also for those who are in Samaria. It is the outcast Samaritans that hear that they too have a place at the table. It is because of the witness of the Holy Ghost filled scattered that there was great joy in the city. Hmm. Joy is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Great joy is not a passing feeling you get when you get something you really wanted. But this kind of joy is associated with an experience of being in God's presence. This, This joy that they had is the experience of walking in the benefits of God. It's one of the fruits. This great joy that they had came through the preaching and the teaching and the healings of Philip, but it really came from being in the presence of a God who loved them enough to give them a way to be redeemed. Hmm. It's because of the witness of the scattered that the joy of salvation is experienced beyond the walls of Jerusalem. Hmm. When I was a kid, I don't even know if they do this in the school system anymore, but we used to receive progress reports. Um, And depending on how your school year was going, they could be just as traumatic and (laughs) life-changing as a report card. You could um, get some privileges depending on how that progress report showed up, or you could lose some privileges. It's a tense time when progress reports come out. You know, on that ride home to school, you're like, girl, I'll see you in six weeks. (laughs) Because I'm about to be on lockdown. But I wonder... what a progress report for the church would look like. The progress report, you remember, would list the most important skills students should learn in each subject at a particular grade level. The progress, you remember the progress reports? Uh, The standard, um, the progress reports would give the standard of the end of the grade period expectations. 
It was a useful tool that teachers used against children, I mean for children, <laughs> so that the parents could see their progression toward those standards. You would get an exceeding above grade level, meeting grade level, progressing toward working below grade level. I wonder what our progression, our progress report would look like. As we studied the acts of the apostles, the development of the church, the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of the mission of the church, I wonder what our progress report would look like for the church universal. I, I, I wonder what salvations, I wonder if we're operating at grade level. I wonder what this congregation's progress report would look like when it comes to mission beyond Jerusalem, beyond the walls of this particular church. I wonder what our individual progress report would look like when we get to the box, the inclusion of the outcast. I stopped by to remind, ah, on my first Sunday preaching in the pulpit of a new conference year after the annual conference where we traditionally cast the vision of the church, I wonder if we've forgotten the work of the scattered. I wonder if we can claim the work of the scattered again. I wonder if we can remember that the work of the scattered is not limited to Philip or Peter, or Paul, or the pastor. But the text reminds us that the work of the scattered is all of us. The work of the scattered is to witness in the places that we find ourselves. Ah, and so when we find ourselves scattered, when our thoughts are scattered by stress, we are to bear witness to a God who loves us. And therefore, we can stand on the word of God. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. When our thoughts are scattered by the pressures of this world, we can bear witness to God, not pretending like we got it all together and nothing hurts our feelings, but resting on the word of God and the peace of God will surpass all our understanding and will guard our hearts and minds in the Christ Jesus, I stop by to remind somebody today that when our hearts are scattered by grief, we ought to bear witness to the word of God that shows up, uh, that says, I don't want you to be uninformed, my brothers and my sisters, about those who have died, so that you won't grieve as those who have no hope. When our minds are scattered by false narratives, by rising domestic violence numbers, by cancer diagnosis, by toxic politics. We are to bear witness that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him, and not one thing came into being without Him, and what has come into being in Him is life, and life that was the light to all people, and light that shines in darkness, and the darkness shall not overcome it. When we are scattered around the social media platforms, because the COVID numbers just won't get better. When we are scattered all over social media to worship, because in Wisconsin, as of October the 6th, 
there were 2,273 con new confirmed cases of COVID and nine new deaths. When we remain scattered around these social media platforms trying to navigate a relentless pandemic and plague that just won't quit. That as of October the 7th in Milwaukee County, new diagnoses are up 2% and deaths are up 1%. What shall the church bear witness? What shall the scattered church do in times like these? I stop by to remind you and to encourage myself that even as a scattered church, we've got to find ways to bear witness to the love of God available in Christ Jesus. we got to find a way to bear witness in Samaria and Judea and to the ends of the world that God loved us so much that God poured God's self into human flesh that he was born of a virgin that he was wrapped in swaddling clothing that he was born in a barn that he was born to poor parents that he was wrapped in swaddling clothing that he was laid in a manger that he grew up an ordinary childhood but one day he answered his father's call to be the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I stop by to remind the church and particularly St. Paul that we are a scattered people. Yes, we are, but we are still called to bear witness in Jerusalem. We are still called to bear witness in Judea. We are still called to bear witness in Samaria. We are still called a scattered people to bear a witness to the ends of the world, not a witness to how great we are and what a wonderful history we have, but to bear witness that God loved us so much that Jesus hung on an old rugged cross bearing your sins and mine, that Jesus died on that cross for your sins and mine. Jesus died, hung his head, gave up the ghost. They put him in a tomb that did not belong to him. We ought to bear witness that early on the third day morning, he got up from the grave with the power of the grave, with the power over sin, with the power over life, with the power over love, with the power over salvation. With the power of joy, with the power of peace, with the power of hope in his hand. The work of a scattered people is to figure out a way to tell God's people about who God is. That his love for his people, his desire to be in relationship, that knowledge of sharing with the world that God does not care about where you've been huh, or what you used to do. God is concerned about your tomorrow. God wants you to be forgiven. God wants you to be redeemed. God doesn't care how you worship as long as you worship in God doesn't care about your genetic makeup who your parents are what they've done or not done for you God is concerned that you don't live in hell and die and go to hell God is concerned about your mental health God is concerned about the abuse that you have endured. God is concerned that you are a repentant abuser. God is concerned about your economic self. God is concerned about where your soul will rest for eternity. That is the work of the church. And so in this moment, I apologize on behalf 
of the church and church folk and the bad theology and the rampant ungrace and unforgiveness that plagues the church. I apologize for every hurt that you have experienced in the church. But baby, don't let that be an excuse. Don't let the enemy use your hurt to keep you bound, to keep you beneath, to keep you from taking your rightful spot at the table. The Bible teaches us that God welcomes all of us. God wants to be in relationship with all of us. And the best way I know how is to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that you believe the crazy idea that an all-powerful God actually knows you and sees you and loves you just as you are and wants to be in relationship with you. If you can make that confession of faith this Lord's Day, that means that you are now in relationship with God in a new way and you are now in church language, you are saved. That means that you have a closer walk with God. That means that you have acknowledged and that you desire God to come into your life, that you desire to accept the teachings of Jesus laid out in scripture, that you desire to have the Holy Spirit enter into your life, to walk with you, to keep you, to encourage you. So that even if all of your family is gone, you are not alone because God in the power of the Holy Spirit is with you. That when you make those trips to the doctor's office and no one can go with you, that God is with you. Accepting Jesus Christ as your personal savior means that you are never alone. There is no place you can sink so low that God won't be with you. There's no place you can, be, you can reach so high that God won't be there with you. And so I pray I pray that the strongholds be broken in your life so that you can walk, that you can accept the grace of God made available in Christ Jesus. And so for those of you who are making that confession of faith right now, wherever you are, maybe you're at home sitting in front of the TV watching on YouTube, maybe you're on your phone in the backyard watching on your phone, maybe on Facebook, maybe you're in your car listening, Maybe you're in bed with the blackout curtains drawn and the covers over your head because it's just too much. Wherever you are, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, I encourage you to reach out to us on one of our platforms and we'll connect you, if not to us, to another church so that you can be fed, that you can grow, that you can be confident, that you can be challenged, that you can experience the love of a scattered church. We praise God for you. We bless God for you. We ask God to cover you from the crowns of your head to the soles of your feet, that God will raise up a hedge of protection around you so that you can walk in the fullness of God's love for you. We celebrate you and we give God glory for those who are saved. We give God glory for those who have renewed their faith. We give God glory for those of us who have been convicted, convicted and called back to the mission of the church. God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the witnesses that are in scripture that bear witness to your healing power. We thank you, O oh God, for those around us who bear witness that you can heal the uncurable, that you can comfort the comfortless, that when grief overwhelms us, that you allow us to grieve with hope. God, we thank you for the space in Jesus the space in the Holy Spirit that allows us 
to be true to the state of our mental and physical and emotional and financial health and claiming the promises laid out in Scripture. And so, God, as we press our way to the doctor's appointments, we declare that by his stripes we are healed. As we struggle financially, God, we declare that you have made us the head and not the tail, that you have purposed us to be lenders and not borrowers. God, in the place of aloneness and loneliness, in the space of depression and suicidal thoughts, in the place of addiction, oh God, addiction to prescription drugs, addiction to street drugs, addiction to alcohol, addiction to inappropriate relationships, addiction to food or sex or whatever it is, oh God, the addiction of needing attention, God, whatever the addiction, we declare that we are more than conquerors in you. God, in the name of Jesus, we confess, oh God, that we as a church have not fulfilled the commission and the call that you have on our lives. God, we ask for your forgiveness, and God, we ask that you pour out a fresh anointing on every member of St. Mark. We ask, oh God, that you pour out a fresh anointing so that we might be like the church, the first century church, that prayed together, that studied together, that worshiped together. It was in those moments, oh God, when they were on one accord praying and singing together, even as a scattered church, oh God, that you continue to add to the numbers, not for their glory, but simply for the witness and the glory of you. And so God, we trust ourselves. We trust this ministry, oh God, not to ourselves and our abilities, but we trust ourselves. We trust this ministry, oh God, to you and to you alone open our hearts and our minds and our ears and our spirits, oh God, so that we might hear from you and walk in the fullness of who you say we are and what we can have. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we believe God that God will fulfill God's promises. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. And the people of God said, Amen. bless God for a scattered people. We bless God for being the scattered people. And we bless God for the opportunity to participate in salvation's progression. And so we stand all over this place and we ask that you stand if you are able wherever you are as we praise God from whom all blessings flow. Company, we bless God for 
the band and the musician. We bless God for our worship participants, um, um, even those who made the announcements. We bless God for the choir, amen, um, who continue to serve faithfully. And so it is this scripture that I give to you and offer to you for this week as a reminder of your responsibility and your work for the progression of salvation. Now those who were scattered, not those who were perfect, but those who were scattered, went from place to place, wherever they went, proclaiming the word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so it is my prayer that the God of peace, the God of joy, the God of hope, the God of love, the God of a scattered people, that that God will rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of you, hence, now, and forevermore. And the people of God sing. Hope you've enjoyed the programming of St. Mark AME Church. Here, spreading the word of our Lord and Savior is priority, as is living the word. That includes reaching more people with the gospel, serving more people in the community with our pop-up pantry, providing a place where people can feel a sense of belonging, and extending the love of Jesus in ways that include social justice. You can help St. Mark reach more people with your donation. It's easy. Simply give with a click of a button on our website, stmarkame.org, or by going to Givelify. Or you can simply mail your donation to 1616 West Atkinson Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53206. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.